directly behind Mick Hennessy, the promoter. Looks as though Mazash might have a, a cut within the mouth, maybe. It could be his lip. Blood coming from his mouth. He's landing plenty, Mazash. It's a good left hand lead, lovely shot. But again, Baxton coming forward, and Mazash trying to time that right hand. He's swinging it over. As you said earlier, though, for a lightweight, he is so heavy handed, Baxton. Well, I don't think Mazash has the power to. Oh, good shot, good right hand. Commentator's curse, I was going to say, yeah. Didn't have the power to hurt Baxton. And Mazash celebrated, didn't he, as he landed it? Yes. Much as it oh, that's better from Baxton. This fight is really warming up now. The feeling it's at a really crucial stage now. This is fourth round here. Paxton had a bad third. Done better in this round. Mizash. With that three, maybe four point deficit from the first couple of rounds, though. Got a really big uphill battle if he's going to come back from that. Closing seconds of the fourth round. Zash has recovered well from that first round knockdown and landing plenty of shots like that. He's got hand speed. But Thaxton has the greater power. We talked about John Thaxton's cheekbones and the fragile nature of his skin. You can see a bit of grazing there around underneath his left eye. No great problem so far, but it shows that Mazash has been getting through. We've got Thaxton ahead and well ahead, but Mazash is coming back into it. The well, Thaxton feet just isn't flowing right now. There's not enough consistency behind his work. Winning the rounds, nonetheless, but it doesn't look as comfortable or as smooth as what he does normally. Fourth round was close. How did you score it? I, I gave that round to Thaxton, the last round. He's getting clipped by that right hand. It will have a cumulative effect if it keeps landing. Mazash, the younger man, only in his 23rd professional fight, Baxton has been from a pro for donkey's years. Back in 1992 he turned pro, tonight in his 43rd. He knows all about going the 12 round distance, Mazash has never had to do it. Baxton has trained for it on numerous occasions and actually gone the 12 round distance four times. Mazash, I remind you, said if I get through those first three rounds, it's going to be my fight. Well, Mazash doing a good job in this round. He's frustrating Thaxton. He's just touching him and just stepping off left or right. There's a lot of movement from him. And as Thaxton plods forward, he keeps his chin down really well, does Mazash. Doesn't pick up too much in return. The only man to have beaten Thaxton over the 12 round distance, Ricky Hatton. Of it. I said before, you know, that obviously wasn't Thaxton's true weight. He is a lightweight.
lightweight and a very powerful lightweight at that. I suppose long term, Manny Pacquiao might come back down to lightweight. He'd fancy coming to Norwich, wouldn't he? Wouldn't that be a fight? <laughs> Well, he's done pretty well here as John Thaxton in the early stages, but Mazash is right back in here. And that's a good uppercut! Great shot from Thaxton! Uh, from Mazash, rather. Right hand almost put him down. Oh, Thaxton's legs just nearly deserted him. He almost sat down on the back on his seat. Then he got decked. Great shot from Mazash. That's his best punch of the fight so far. And there's been a cumulative effect of these punches which Mazash has been landing Paxton loses the round This March on Satanta Sports in rugby we bring you the climax of the RBS Six Nations Championship you could not write it. the Anglo-Welsh Cup semi-finals plus action from the Guinness Premiership and the Magnus League and in football, we bring you World Cup qualifiers from South America and Europe, all four quarterfinals from the FA Cup, plus the UEFA Cup and the Copa Libertadores. This March on Satanta Sports. Anthony Mazash is right back in this fight with punches Round like that. Six. That right hand came so close to putting Thaxton down. Well, he was a little bit off balance as well, but there was a punch landed nevertheless. But that served as a wake-up call for Thaxton. You know, he's been here before. Well, we've got Mazash winning rounds three and five. It would be an argument, I think, that he might have won the fourth as well. I know you scored it the other way, Duke, but... You never know. It's actually certainly right back in it. He, could have, he did a good job in that last round. Again, frustrating Faxton with this constant movement that he keeps giving him. Well, they'll have looked, won't they, at how Yuri Romanov beat Faxton. Uh, Romanov world class, undoubtedly. They said they've studied him long and hard. But that would have given him enough confidence, Mazash, to continue doing what he's doing. And he's looking for the right uppercut, which he had so much success with in that last round. Thaxton needs to regroup, tighten his defence. Keep the pressure on Mazash, break him down. He needs to break his heart, so he needs one of his trademark big left hooks or right hands. Stop this guy in his tracks. Mazash's speed is giving him the edge right now. Mazash has got a big busted lip. Thaxton needs to try and concentrate on landing more punches on that. Giving him something to think about. That was early, I think, that he got that injury. Probably in the first couple of rounds. with his right hand lead and that counter sweeping hook from Mazash didn't miss by an awful lot well Mazash you know supposedly strictly a non-puncher three stoppages in all of his fights he's not a big puncher but getting through on Faxton good fight interesting fight Trade paper boxing news said that this might not be the foregone conclusion that some people were suggesting. They don't often get it too far wrong in that publication. Paxton looks a little bit weary to me, John. He looks a little just a little bit lacklustre.